Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Locked on Flames. I'm your host, Jess Bomasto. Former Flames captain Mark Giordano makes his return to the Saddle Dome this evening. And let's take a look back at his career as well as this week's winners and losers. <laughs> Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a fantastic Friday. I'm your host, Jess Belmosto of the Metropolitan Riveters Public Relations Team, as well as a plethora of blogs throughout my five, six-year career in the NHL sphere. Thank you so much for making Locked on Flames your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your favorite podcasts, such as Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Odyssey, Audible, YouTube. Make sure that you are subscribed. It is free 99, and you'll never want to miss an episode. Mark Giordano left a team with no identity for a team full of misfits, and is there mad love or is there bad blood between him and the Calgary organization? This decision was fairly obvious for the Seattle Kraken to make. You know, they did need a leader. They needed a defenseman. They needed team-friendly-ish contracts in order to make the uh, cap space work. And Gio's contract was certainly a lot better than Milan Lucic's uh, who was not performing well at the time. And he's kind of back to performing not so great, but, you know, scoring isn't everything, but let let me not. <laughs> Mark Giordano um, played 949 games for the Flames. That is one hell of a career, you know. That is nearly 1,000 games with the same team. You don't really see that anymore, and you don't, often see players just go from, you know, players moving on from their captain in that way, you know. He was a 500-plus point blue liner, and there was a decrease in production last year and the year prior, um, with the, the, the seasons being the only two seasons with less than 10 goals since 2013, which, that's a long time. I know that I am someone who still thinks it's like 2017, but we are in 2022. And I think that it was evident that his age was catching up to him. It's not a knock at him. You know, he has had a a great career. He had a great career in Calgary. uh, Just being that leader, being uh, that first pairing defenseman and being the captain, the person that everyone looked up to. And that kind of wasn't the thing towards the end, you know? Uh, The blue line as a whole was very young last year, and it still is this year, really. But they didn't have an identity. They were not very good at defense. You know, last year, Rasmus Anderson struggled big time. He was slow, sluggish no real defense from him and his offensive stats did not do him any favors, but then, you know, you do have to factor in that it was a shortened season an all Canadian team division. And of course he was a new dad. So having a, an aging defenseman as your top pair, an aging defenseman and a new dad as your top pair only is going <laughs> to cause problems because they're going to be slow and sluggish and tired. But I think that adding Chris Tanev to that roster and to that defensive core did wonders and did such a great, um, you know, elevation for that, for the decor because Chris Tanev is considered like the second captain in, um, I almost said Buffalo. Nope. (laughs) In Vancouver. And he was so highly respected, so highly regarded, and people loved him. 
And they still love him. Every, I've never heard anyone say a bad thing about this guy. He's had like one, not that fighting in hockey makes you bad, but he, he's had like one career fight and he's just a very nice guy. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know what the actual fallout was in the room last year in the disconnect between the players and Geo. It appeared to be the situation in Toronto when, you know, the players, I, what I have gathered is that the players were very sick of Kachuk's antics and did not really want to see any more of this. And Gio potentially said, like, guys, come on, like, it's fine. And then he just kind of lost the room. Because uh, I think enabling negative behavior that impacts your team is just uh, not a good move. Not a good move. But... Kachuk has moved on from that. I think it's pretty clear that he has as well. And I don't know how Gio left things with the front office and everyone there. I think that it was very clear that he knew that this was coming down the pipeline. I think he knew from the start of the season, which leads me to believe there was that disconnect and why, you know, he had kind of like mentally checked out. And I'm sure that's, that's going to be difficult. You know, you're moving on from a team that you spent your entire life with. You built all those community relations with the guys that you've played with, the, the team doctors, everyone in the city and the surrounding areas, you know. Um, but I think he did prepare himself to move on from a team with no identity to a team full of misfits. And uh, I don't really think that it's worked out for him too well this year, but uh we're going to talk more about this Seattle Kraken team and what the Flames can do and what they can expect from their former captain and his new team uh, in the next segment. But first, we're going to talk about built Bars. You know, maybe players who are kind of slow and sluggish need a little bit more of built Bar in their life. If you don't know, built Bars are a delicious tasting protein bar that gets you through your day. There are a million different ways that you can enjoy built Bars frozen in your protein shakes and uh, melted and kind of make it like a fun Sunday sort of thing uh, or just eat it like a candy bar. <laughs> uh, they are a delicious tasting protein bar, high in fiber, high in protein, low in calories, low in carbs and sugar as well. And you can get them for 15% off at built.com with promo code locked 15. Thank you so much for tuning into Locked on Flames. I'm your host, Jess Belmosto, and make sure you are following me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. The Flames are looking to get win number nine tonight against the Seattle Kraken and those impact players that we have been harping on and talking about all week, all season, they have a real time to shine today. <laughs> Seattle is coming off a 5-3 loss to the Winnipeg Jets. They are last in the Pacific. And they don't really have much going for them. You know, they, you know what they have going for them? They have a bomb locked on Kraken host, Erica Ayala, who is over in Beijing right now covering the Olympics. Absolutely insane. And they have really cool jerseys. Um, they're like one of the few teams that actually does a white jersey well. So good job. <laughs> the Flames have a very clear advantage here. And I think that it is one of those times where it's easy to go in and underestimate your opponent. You know, you can kind of not underestimate them, but just kind of play to their level and not give it that full 100%, that full 150%, 120% that you, you tend to give to, you know, teams that can compete at, at an NHL level. But, you know, they, they want win number nine. They want to keep climbing those ranks and – to kind of hope to look to avoid Vegas in the playoffs. You know, that that's what's scaring me as a possibility. But, you know, I think it's doable. A loss isn't the worst thing that could hit this team. God, I hope I did not just jinx that. Holy smokes. But, uh, you know, I think... I, I, don't, I just want to be realistic and maintain those expectations. Because I never want to, like be too cocky and be like, yeah, 
got the flames. They got this in the bag, you know. But I think it, it, it is kind of easy to get comfortable and get secure with this team with the way that they're playing and the way that their stars play, you know. Markstrom, I believe Markstrom's in net tonight. And I would say that the lines are more than likely the same as they were last game because Daryl Sutter does not change things that are working. <laughs> and I, this is a great time for the Flames to snatch up those two extra points or two more points, I should say. And it, it's probably going to be a night where Tyler Toffoli sees more minutes, sees more time on the penalty kill. Um, I think that Sutter has time, has had time to finagle with the, uh, the lines and just the chemistry, I guess I should say more like the, the logistics of hockey logistics. I can't even talk today. Excuse me. Logistics of hockey and the more technical side of things that, you know, we don't really get to see as hockey fans, but that's why I'm here to help break it down for you. Um, uh, the first line is going to have a night. I can already tell you that they're going to light up uh, wh whoever is in net for the Seattle crack. And I think that they have just had really, really bad luck with their goaltending. And it unfortunately, it just looks like they get lit up every single night. Like last night, they let in five goals. Five goals from the Winnipeg Jets. So, you know, I, I just don't really think that it's it's going to be an offensive struggle. I think that their blue line is just very young. I don't even know if it's young. I just don't think they're very good. I just don't think it's a very good team overall, to be entirely honest. You know, I think that it's uh, it's hard to build a great, um, you know, talented, successful team in your first year, especially when you're building from scratch. Uh, and especially when you lose one of your forwards who was having a good season, Brandon Tana Tanev, I can't even talk, my goodness, Brandon Tanev, you know, he was having a good year and then his, he tore his MCL, I believe, MCL or ACL. And he just, you know, obviously has to sit out the rest of the season and you, you hope that the team plays well and whatnot, but um, unfortunately, the only good thing about them is their jerseys <laughs> and, you know, the flames tonight are just going to have their, this is a fun game. This is going to be a fun game, fun game because you get the geo tribute. You're going to get to see the Kraken at the dome for the first time. You're going to be able to see a lot of talent and hopefully, uh, energy from the flames. I would expect that they're going to put on a show tonight. I, I don't think that this is going to be a game where they hold back. I would say that this is going to be a game where, you know, they kind of just let loose and have fun. I have a very strong feeling that that's how it's going to be. And there's no shame in that. You know, I think that, <laughs> I think that they, they've kind of earned their opportunity to have fun, to have a good night and to go out there and just let loose and, Obviously, that being said, you have to go out there and stand strong and you want those nine wins in a row. And I think that your players tonight are going like the players you're going to want to watch besides like your first line. <laughs> I just I feel like we just need to obviously show them some love. <laughs> but when we're talking about like players to watch, I think we have to as a society agree to focus on other uh, aspects of your team. So I'm going to say your player to watch is going to be Oliver Shillington. I, I have a good feeling about him. And I think that at the start of the season, we were all kind of like, okay, like, is, you know, he going to request a trade? Like, is this finally it? Um, no, no, he has really had his chance and has finally stuck up here and is not floating in between Stockton and uh, Calgary. He has solidified himself. And I think that he's probably going to have another strong offensive night. He, When he finds his game offensively, he finds it. It's not just like a one-off thing. So I think that that'll be fun to watch. 
And then, of course, you know, I'm obviously going to say Tyler Toffoli because he is a player that has come in and has already made his impact. He's come in, he made his impact the first game. You know, he was like, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to score real quick. And I think that it's definitely interesting to see how <laughs> he's just come in and like handled the puck well and has taken over, um, <clears throat> has taken over as that, that guy that the Flames have needed for quite a while. So I think that Tyler Toffoli is just, he's going to be your guy. He's going to be one of those impact players as well as, I'm going to say it, Andrew Mangiapane. I think that Brad's going to have himself a game as well. Um, he, you know, he is always looking for it. But because he only had two shots on goal last game, I feel like he's really going to go on a tear tonight. I think he's going to have the confidence back under his belt after going a, a few games without a goal. So, you know, I, I have faith in him. Why would you not believe in the bread? The bread always rises to the occasion. <laughs> you get it? But coming up next, we will wrap up the show with our winners and losers of the week. And surprise, Team Canada is the winner. So uh, make sure you tune in next to hear all of the amazing things I have to say about the women's hockey team from Canada, the national hockey team. And uh, before we do that, though, let's talk about Bet Online. Bet Online is your best place for sports news, podcasts, Olympic coverage, you name it. Bet Online has everything you need from college, hoops, uh, NBA, NHL, UFC, boxing, everything. And there, you can't really ask for much more. And make sure that you head on over to Bet Online and check out their uh, live. Uh, updates as well as latest odds, totals, player performance props, and to see where the next fired coach is going to land. Bet online is betonline.net is your number one spot for all of your sports betting needs. Bet online where the game starts. Winners and losers of the week. I have not talked about this at all this week on the show. So, winners, here's another gold medal to Team Canada. If you're watching on YouTube, I just. You, you, you're now a gold medal winner, <laughs> but I, the women's, the women's hockey team, how can I not like, even as a women's hockey fan who obviously is rooting for team USA, I knew going into this that they stood like there, there was no, no chance that team USA was going to win. Are you joking? Um, Mar Marie Philippe Poulin um, played a fantastic game. Literally, like, I don't even know. She looked fantastic out there. Queen Canada, Queen Clutch. Literally, why is not why is there an NHL team not going after her? I don't know what the rules are. I don't know what the regulations are. Get her on a team. Have the Flames thought about signing her? Sarah Nurse um, also now leads the uh, women's history in women's history for the most points in the Olympics. Um, and she is the first, so she beats Haley Wickenshire and um, it becomes the first black player to win a gold medal or black hockey player to win a gold medal. And that is the first, like that just, I can't believe that's happening in 2022. You know, I think that this is awesome. She, I love her. She's a fantastic human being. She, is one of those players that is obviously so fun to watch. But when she gets in the zone, she is so fun. And just, like, she is the two best play hockey players in North America are Black women. Michaela grant Mentis from uh, the Toronto Six in the PHF, and then Sarah Nurse for the Canadians women's team. So, you know, happy Black History Month. And, of course, you know, it was just a, such a well-coached game for Team Canada. It felt so effortless for them. You know, they go up uh, early to nothing. They get a goal called back, like the first goal called back. But, you know, what can you say there? And then Team USA. What a joke of a performance from them, okay? So, first, they can't – they cannot score. They cannot buy themselves a goal – 
if they had all the money in the world. Um, quite honestly, they need to fire their coach. It was just a dreadful performance, to say the least. Um, they He left the best goalie at home, didn't want to bring um, like a taxi squad because he didn't think it would be worth the experience and it wouldn't be fun for them. And then their first game, Megan Duggan goes down and, you know, whatever. And he refused to play the younger players and could not assemble a solid power play unit. If his life and coaching integrity depended on it. And that the team did not deserve to win. You know, they made it close. They made it close in the third period. Too little, too late. But the team, they... <laughs> Like, I don't even want to say they deserve silver because it was such a god-awful performance. And it was such a horrible effort from them because of the way their coach was managing the lines. He didn't, it was all of, like, you know, Hillary Knight and uh, Kendall Coyne Schofield carrying the weight of the team. And they were exhausted because their stupid coach is out there not letting them do anything. They're, they're not playing the fourth line. They're not giving the top players, you know, a few minutes to catch their breath, reset, and go back out there. They're having to carry it. And these poor kids, um, Jinsey Dune is out there not being able to, um, she's not playing. The coach didn't play her. Um, and Jesse Comfort, again, barely saw a minute. And I don't understand it. I don't understand. So I hope that um, in four years we see a different coach. I don't think we'll see Kendall Coyne. And I don't think we'll see. Uh, we might see Hillary Knight. I don't know. I don't know because she's 32. She's the oldest player on the team. So, you know, I think now is such a great time to get invested in women's hockey. So you can see the next kind of um, what what might come to your Olympic team. Pay attention to the NCAA. Pay attention to um, the PWHPA, the uh, PHF, and the Swedish League. Um, there is so much women's hockey out there for you to consume and to become invested in, and it's free. It's literally right there for you. The product is there, and if you loved that game, you just you should watch. You should watch more, and I will happily help you find the resources <laughs> to do that. But, uh, yeah, that's all I have for this week. Uh, go Canada. I will happily have Tim Hortons for you. Team USA, um, you can't even offer me health care, so <laughs> uh, just kidding. But thank you all so much for tuning in to another week of Lockdown Flames. You have made this last month a historic run in terms of downloads and listens, so thank you so much. And I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Make sure you are subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. And, of course, make sure you're subscribed on YouTube as well. And that's all from me today, and I will catch you all on Monday. Have a great day.